Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, James. And yes, I'd like to take this opportunity this morning to uh, talk to you and share with you some more information about uh, what is in place on the Isle of Man currently in terms of our security, but also some of the work that's underway and that is planned. So I think, um, as uh, we probably all would agree, our safety on this island is something that we probably do take for granted. And I think we recognize is a key pillar of what makes the island attractive, not only to the people who are already here, but to those we might want to seek to attract to fill our jobs and to contribute to our economy and society. Just by way of background in terms of our positioning, we are in the common travel area, as everyone will be aware. And what that means in practice for us is, of course, it gives us free movement. Free movement between uh, the UK, Northern Ireland, Ireland, and the Channel Islands. However, what it also does is present us with some risks. Just some of the headlines on this slide, I think, highlight the types of vulnerabilities that the common travel area with its relative freedom of movement can pose to the island. Um, we do know that our island is vulnerable to exploitation by criminals. And we've seen over the last two years or so a number of operations involving police and also customs and immigration that have been successful in disrupting the activities of the serious and organized criminals who seek to move drugs, weapons, and cash through our entry points. There is also evidence of people trafficking and immigration fraud. In his annual report, which is about to be published, the chief constable has confirmed that more than 3.25 kilograms of heroin, 1.75 kilograms of cocaine, and 19 kilograms of cannabis were seized by police between 23 and 2024, alongside 65,000 pounds in cash as part of three major operations that targeted organized crime groups and involved 21 arrests. I think the other thing that we have to recognize is that the associated threats with this type of serious and organized criminal activity are significant for our residents and our businesses on this island. Organized crime brings exploitation, particularly of our young and vulnerable people. And violence, sadly, inevitably follows. Behind the headlines on this slide, uh, you see there are people involved in and victims of drug enforcement debt activity. The island attracts a street price, price for drugs typically three times higher than those found in the UK which means that selling drugs here is a lucrative market. And while the risks of getting caught are high, the reward is higher still. And so we feel strongly this balance must be redressed so that the risks of being caught smuggling drugs and cash are higher than the reward for those who participate in this. So a little bit about how we are structured in terms of our agencies in the front line of protecting the island and enhancing its security. The work done to date and the intelligence available to our law enforcement bodies has shown the changing nature of the threat and risk and has led to the strategic prioritization of work to address it. While the law enforcement agencies you see referenced on this slide have conducted a number of successful operations that have been well publicized, um, it is recognized that we should embed a comprehensive and sustained approach to maintaining security at our entry points. And a strategy that is due to be published a little later today, the Securing Our Island strategy, sets out the principles, aims, and actions to deliver this. I think it is important to be clear that the Securing Our Island strategy and the associated actions is about tackling criminality and the changing nature of the threat and risk. It's to maintain our safety, which we recognize is a key pillar 
of what makes it attractive for those who are already resident here and those who we would seek to attract to fill our jobs, support our economy and contribute to society. The island must remain open for business, both for those of us who are here and those who we seek to attract. The successful delivery of this strategy will involve joint working across the key agencies, namely the Isle of Man Constabulary and Customs and Immigration. And in our structure, whilst the Isle of Man Constabulary sits under the purview of the Department of Home Affairs, you will see that Customs and Immigration as a combined co-located set of agencies sit beneath the purview of Treasury. And there was comment, I think, in, in an earlier session this morning about the siloed nature of government. One thing I want to absolutely emphasise, and I'm sure when the uh, Collector of Customs speaks uh, after my presentation, is that this approach to securing our island only works when we work collaboratively across agencies, and that is very much our focus and work that is already happening. The reason it's important that we work so collaboratively is that under our legal framework, each of these agencies has slightly different roles and slightly different powers. So the police have certain powers to stop and search people and vehicles, while customs have powers to search goods, which includes post and freight, and immigration have powers regarding immigration offenses. As I say, these agencies already do collaborate, Part of what we are seeking to achieve through the Securing Our Island strategy is to enhance their capability and capacity for collaboration through intelligence sharing and operational effectiveness. To support this work, the Council of Ministers have set four policy principles. As set out on the slide, these are comprehensive security measures, efficient, fair and proportionate entry processes, compliance with international obligations, and an adaptive and resilient approach. These principles will help the law enforcement agencies cooperate around the shared goals and aims and support delivery of the clear ambition for securing our island. Then underpinning these principles are three strategic aims of prevent, protect, and pursue. These aim to detect criminals before they enter the island, safeguard residents from harm, and bring offenders to justice. Each aim is supported by objectives that describe the steps we are taking in more detail. And I'd now like to share with you those objectives and talk to you about the actions which are underway or proposed to be put in place. So prevent, as I've said, is to make our borders less attractive to criminals. And our goal is to prevent crime on the island by providing law enforcement agencies with the necessary tools and information, reducing opportunities for exploitation, and collaborating with the UK and wider common travel area law enforcement agencies. In terms of specific actions, work is underway to allow customs and immigration officers access to police systems to support effective information sharing between the three agencies. And while targeted information sharing works within our current legislative framework, developing an information sharing security bill would enable more routine and automated information sharing. Secondly, the constabulary continues to work closely with partners including the National Crime Agency and Northwest Regional Organized Crime Unit to conduct intelligence-led operations to disrupt and deter organized criminals. Another area of collaboration is to work with the Civil Aviation Authority, Customs and the Airport to ensure law enforcement agencies are provided with better information on the movement of private aviation. Knowing who is traveling here is a key aspect of better security. The collection, review, and assessment of passenger data on a proportionate basis is a means to identify threats and known criminals and to act as a deterrent. Now, law enforcement agencies already use powers within the existing legal framework. However, again, to support increased effectiveness, we will work with the uh, Isle of Man Steam Packet Company and look at any further changes to legislation that may be needed to support this. 
The Collector of Customs, as I've said, is presenting after me specifically on the work that is underway to deliver improvements and enhance protections in immigration. So I don't want to talk about any detail on that other than to highlight it is a key part of the overall actions being undertaken to reduce the risk of exploitation and enhance security. Another area of action is to ensure the safety of our territorial waters and that those working within them are legitimately able to do so. So in particular here, we want to align our legislation with that of the UK so that people are unable to work in our seas without a valid visa. Turning to the second uh, main goal, which is protect and that is to enhance the detection of criminals and illicit goods and cash arriving in or leaving the island, as well as immigration crime, and to ensure the safety and well-being of individuals by preventing harm. Our border security measures include providing a physical presence at air and seaports to detect criminals, illicit goods and immigration crime. And we want to make better use of technology to keep our borders safe. Additionally, we want to continue to provide support for children and vulnerable adults who are the victims of exploitation. And I think it's worth pointing out that on that, we already do have what we call the daily exploitation meeting, which involves relevant agencies in the Isle of Man to be able to identify and then quickly refer and offer support to those who may be subject to criminal exploitation. Turning again to some of the uh, more detail on some of the actions that are underway, uh, to enhance detection, we are working towards having automatic number plate recognition and facial recognition technology deployed at the ports. And, and what we need to do is prepare legislation to provide the basis for use of this technology. We are therefore targeting before the end of the year for the legislation needed for AMPR to have progressed to Tinwalls and the bill that is needed to support use of facial recognition we will want to bring forward in this 2024-25 parliamentary year. And I should say that the use of this technology again is very much targeted at identifying, detecting and then disrupting criminal activity through our entry ports. A second area of action which is underway is that ports policing officers will be transferred to the Isle of Man Constabulary to enable closer collaboration. Work has been going on on this during this year and we anticipate the transfer will be able to take effect by the end of November, enhancing the ability of law enforcement officers again to detect criminals and illicit goods. Another area of work is to adopt an intelligence-led approach to monitor arrivals and departures at smaller ports. Work has begun on closer engagement with the Department of Infrastructure's Harbours team to better collect and identify intelligence on small boat movements. In terms of law enforcement presence, a new dog team is now in operation, screening arrivals and deport departures at the sea terminal alongside dedicated customs officials. And I will show you in a few minutes a video highlighting this change that is now in place. We continue to proactively scan inbound and outbound post, packets and parcels for illicit items. And a new area that we need to focus more work on is the fact that it remains um, a significant challenge to the ability to detect criminal moving through our ports simply by the fact that it is possible to book onto a steam packet ferry paying cash and using a false name. So that is why it is a key area for us to work with the Isle of Man steam packet and the airlines to make sure we can develop an efficient way to verify passenger identity before travel. And now I mentioned uh, the video and I'd like to introduce Inspector Mikey Taylor. Obviously travellers coming into the Isle of Man or even leaving the Isle of Man will notice that there is now an increased presence of police officers and customs and immigration officers who are working around there and that's a part of our commitment to ensure that we have a more secure island for the future. This year the police have committed funding to the dog unit so now on the island we have four specialist search dogs which are predominantly based at the sea terminal and also work at the airport, forward freight distribution centres and also the post office. 
The unit's been active now for just over four weeks. In that time, in partnership with um, Customs and Immigration, we've seized um, around about £82,000 of drugs coming into the island and approximately £33,000 of uh, criminal proceeds going out, which I'm sure many will be reassured by that. So a lot of the work I've been talking about obviously happens a lot behind the scenes, but I think that's an example of one of the changes that people will start to notice uh, in terms of steps taken to enhance uh, our security. Finally, thinking about the strategic aim of Pursue, this focuses on the maintenance of robust enforcement through criminal sanctions that punish offenders and deter others. And it also highlights the ongoing need to disrupt criminal activity by seizing property and obstructing drugs markets. The specific actions related to this objective uh, is in relation to the continued operations and activity to enforce. And operations that have been conducted in the recent past, including operations Achilles, Athena and Nightjar have resulted in the seizure of hundreds of thousands of pounds of cash and drugs. And work is ongoing to continue the disruption of criminal activity, and that will continue to involve working with UK law enforcement agencies. Um, and again, I'm sure that the, the Collector of Customs is going to talk about the work in terms of enforcement and immigration crime. In terms of uh, the second action, we are considering the extension of modern slavery legislation uh, to the island, specifically to look at those who might be exploited through human trafficking and immigration crime. I think it's important to say that we do have some legislation and we have been able to deal with um, uh, cases using that legislation. The question is whether we now need to enhance uh, our legislative position to provide tools uh, to, to deal with any future cases. I think our priority though is to try and prevent this type of criminality and this type of issue arising on the Isle of Man. Finally, uh, we will continue to use proceeds of crime legislation to seize cash, property and assets from criminals. So in conclusion, I think as I stated at the beginning, we do recognise that we face a range of threats from those who would seek to exploit our open borders and our position within the common travel area. The work done to date and the intelligence available to our law enforcement agencies has shown the changing nature of this threat and risk that actually has happened within a very, very short space of time. And so that changing nature has led to a strategic prioritization of work to address it. Work that involves a proactive and a coordinated approach. And as I've said, whilst we have conducted a series of successful operations, it's recognized that what we really should do is embed a sustained and comprehensive approach to maintaining the security of our island. And the strategy that will be published later today absolutely talks to the matters that I have raised with you this morning and shared with you and the actions that we have taken and are taking. I think I'd like to emphasize again, though, that this is about our security, maintaining our security, our attractiveness for the island, and therefore it is directed at tackling criminality. We must, in addition to this, make sure that we remain open for business and that those of us as lawful abiding citizens can continue to go about our business and we can continue to attract those who can come and support and contribute to our economy and society. The successful delivery of this strategy involves joint working across the key agencies, Isle of Man Police, Customs and Immigration. Their enhanced collaboration is already underway both on island and continues with off-island law enforcement agencies. Changes have happened, work is underway and we will continue progress on the actions I have outlined today over the coming months to deliver the strategic priority of security in our vision for a secure, vibrant and sustainable island. Thank you.